experience, it's rare that you can find a kind of practical, old-style working musician who's also conversant with and comfortable with uh, the new music machines that are made possible by computer science. And our next speaker, Jerry Riopel. Uh, Jerry's worked with uh, all the great names in the music business, and uh, yet and at the same time had a hankering to kind of extend the ability to create music to a general public. And while I've seen devices like this in their experimental form at the Media Lab, let's say, in, uh, in uh, Boston at MIT, uh, Jerry has now reduced this thing to a practical commercial product, and soon we will all be able to take advantage of the creativity that this little device makes possible. Jerry, real pal. <laughs> This is a recreational musical instrument, which is basically a new field. Um, technology allows us to do things, uh, complex things, very simply. And the idea behind this being an instrument that everybody can play right away, that you can have a good time with it right away. And if you want to get really good at it, then of course you'd have to do some study and, uh, and you'd have to work at it a bit. I'll, I'll play you a piece. Everything about this instrument is sympathetic, so we, do, we take out the bad notes and we leave in the good notes, and everything is composed. You can't walk up to it and play Happy Birthday unless it's composed in here somewhere. Um, but what the, the overall concept is to make music available in a way that it's never been before. Ideas are everything to me. As a, I'm a singer-songwriter. That's been my job all my life. And, and the trick is to find that central idea and expand on it. Uh, and so I, I'm going to tell you how this came about. Well, I was about 10 years old, um, 10, 12 around in there, and we would go to the lake on, for vacation in the summertime. And they had a little store there. And we thought of it as the candy store or the ice cream store. And they had a door announcer. And it was an incandescent light beam. And you could see where it was because of the dust in the air. And we would try to climb under it and jump over it. And we basically drove this store owner crazy playing in this beam. And about 15 years ago, I'd kind of semi-retired to Hawaii. And I had a lot of time to just fool with ideas. And I remembered that. And I thought about, you know, musical instruments are difficult to play. And I, thought, I just started thinking about why they were made the way they are. And, and, uh, and I remembered the light beam. And I thought, well, why couldn't you make an instrument that used light beams for triggers instead of a string um, or a keyboard uh, to trigger a synthesizer. And I started to fool around with it. And then uh, eventually, I, got a, I went to Radio Shack, and I bought some door announcers. And I put them on a piece of plywood, and I hooked them to every kind of drum. I, had, I, I was into somewhat of electronic music and recording. And I eventually got a, a noise to come out of the synthesizer when I broke uh, a light beam. But it also wasn't a musical instrument. Uh, it wasn't fine enough, fast enough, tight enough for a musician to be interested in it. It was, a, it was an interesting conversation piece, but not a, truly a musical instrument, which means you have to be able to get really good at it. Let me just tell you a little bit more about how the device itself works. There are six laser beams across here. These, these are the sensors that you see glowing 
the laser beams are hitting the sensors. Actually, this instrument is even easier to play in the dark. Um, but the lasers are thin and they're fast. And I originally designed it with stand-up units, uh, is how I started out. And you could play it with a conductor's baton and you would truly feel like you were directing an orchestra. And you're a composer and a, and a player and a conductor at the same time with this device. It has a chain of events attached to a laser. So if I hit, if I break that, if I interrupt that beam, and it's all about interrupting light, not causing light, if I break that, uh, it hits the first note of a chain of events. If I hit it again, you get the second note in the chain. But if I block the beam, that chain of events will stream. Now that's a very important factor because the computer will do a lot of the work for you. And these are, it's completely programmable in every way you can think of, of course. And, and another thing that's different about this than any musical instrument is it's really, it's really meant to tickle the player. It's not so much about watching it or it's really the, 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 the deal is it's fun to do it. Quincy Jones. He, uh, he's fanatical about this instrument. He, he has it at home. Stevie Wonder has it in his studio also. This is Quincy's studio, actually. This has been, we've really been trying to keep this under the radar until we're ready to launch it. And now that Quincy has it, it as you can see, it's impossible. And he's, this is an interview about Oprah. It has nothing to do with anything. But when they cut to Quincy, he's, you know, um, I love Quincy. And uh, he is going to endorse this and uh, be a part of it, and it's very exciting. I didn't know that the superstars would validate this the way that they do. Uh, I was really kind of surprised, because they could have easily just said, yeah, cool, it's a toy, though, you know, or whatever, but they don't. And, and that's been a great thing. And now I want to take you to the kind of the bookend, the other end of the spectrum, and that's the children's hospital. And we have this in the Phoenix Children's Hospital in the Flagstaff Med Center, and we have one at the Edison School for uh, special needs kids. And we have one at Dr. Barry Bittman's Mind Body Wellness Center. Dr. Barry Bittman is a world leader on mind body wellness, and he, is, he has proven, uh, he and some scientists are published now, they've proven that you actually improve the immune system by playing music, not by listening to it or dancing to it, although those things I'm sure have a similar effect, but by playing music, that there's something that happens because of that. You have those two ends of the spectrum, the super musical minds and the young minds that have no sense of music at all, other than that they kind of know what music is. And, and, and all of the rest of us are in between. So it's a gigantic audience for something like this. <laughs> I thought we'd try to get someone to play it who's never touched it. So this is a little classical piece. Oh, good. And uh, Thank you. I'll start it, and you can just do whatever. So I'll just start it. There's no electricity, just a USB cable.
You've uplifted our spirits. Thank you so much.